Hello everyone, welcome. Just wanted to stop by to remind you with the holiday season here. And for a lot of people it means stress. I want to remind you about my simple meditation. It's not my meditation, it's a meditation. But it is exquisitely simple. It restores you to the state of mind that you had a long time ago when you were a little child and you were carefree and the world was out there but it didn't bother you. All the headlines on the news and all the, the arguments and all the things that were going on, they didn't bother you at all. And it was a life of discovery. You must refine that spirit. And in the Bible, it talks about it as being in the world, but not of the world. In the world, but not of the world. That's exactly what it is. It's a little bit distant. And I'm talking to you from there right now. That's where I'm at. I am bringing forth from that dimension. It's like a parallel dimension. but. But when you are, see, when you're lost in something, whether it's a conversation or a video game or texting or daydreaming or worrying or some problem, when you're lost in it, you lose perspective. You lose yourself. You, you actually become it. And it becomes you. Do you understand that? You have to have your own identity. The identity you had when you were a little tiny child. Like I've always said, you could have become an Einstein or a Stephen Jobs or a Susan B. Anthony or a Ruth or an Isaiah or a Beethoven. Something wonderful. But instead, what happened? You became, remember I said, when you get lost in something, it becomes you and you become it. You lose your own identity. And nowhere is that truer than when you resent something. When you resent someone or something, that takes you away from that blithe, carefree, heavenly, state and it puts you not only closer to the thing that you hate but it puts you into a state of mind and being where you absorb what it is and it absorbs you that's why you become like what you hate do you understand so you have to find the mindset of love but you can't give yourself love you can't make yourself loving you can't do anything. Christ said, of myself, I can do nothing, he said, of himself. And for everyone else, he said, can you turn one white hair black or black hair white? No, of course you could use some kind of hair coloring, but you, you know what he means. He, he said, who can add one cubit to his height? You can't, you can't change yourself, but you can yearn for that heavenly estate that you once had and you turned your back on it, but you couldn't help it because the world was very powerful and the world outshouted the still small voice. The still small voice. We all understand that. I haven't, I don't use that term very much. You, you want to know why? Or that phrase. Because it's not a voice. See, God rarely talks to people with words. He shines his light and you see in his light. So the phrase Mean, the word still in the phrase means quiet. It means silent. The voiceless voice, the wordless word, the silent um, calling, silent. The silent voice. It's intuition. It's what you knew when you were, when you had, it's what you had when you were a little child, you had intuition. You knew things 
and you saw things you just saw and you knew you must refine that because it, it is from that that simple thing that you had and you lost you could have become and I see he, he hung on to it he wasn't perfect but he hung on to it to some extent and so did someone like Stephen Jobs he held on to it you must have, you must refine it you lost it you probably didn't hang on to it at all but it's still there it's still there it's called conscience Now you know it is conscience, 2020 hindsight. It's your friend, but now you don't think it's your friend because it wants to rub your nose at what you've done wrong. And what have you done wrong? Well, you've hated some people and resented people and you've been phony with people and you've been dishonest and sneaky and so on. But, but worse than that, you turned your back on the, this quiet knowing that God gave you your most precious gift. So refine it. And the best way I know to refine it is to, first of all, want to refine it. Want to know the purpose for your existence. And see that the world, its enticements, and yes, things to hate are also enticing. But so are pleasures and things. See, God wants you to have things. He wants you to, to have whatever is appropriate for you. A car, a house, clothes, an iPhone. He wants you to have them. But remember, he said, first things first. Put first the kingdom of God. So first yearn. Begin again to yearn for. Remember when you were a little child. Maybe you were laying on the grass at night, on a beautiful summer's night, looking up at the stars. And you somehow sensed that your life had a purpose, was a meaning. There was something for you to do. But you lost that awe and wonder and sense of yearning. Refind it. It's still there. Refind it. Become like a little child. Become like a little child again, carefree, happy go lucky, like Alfred E. Newman from Mad Magazine. He says, What, me worry? That's the way you have to become. See? So get the little meditation. I have. I have a free meditation. When you go to my website, I'm looking for my iPhone, I put it away. When you go to my website, the first thing you'll see is a beautiful little slideshow. One of them says meditation. You just press on that and it takes you to the free meditation. You can listen to it for free. It's like seven minutes long. It's beautiful. Then when you Look below the slideshow, there are some icons. One of them says meditation. Push on that one. It takes you to the four-part meditation, which is exquisitely beautiful. That one, we're asking a donation of $10, okay? But you can read the first, You uh, excuse me, you can listen to the first part of it and practice it for free, part one. It's four parts. Part one is beautiful. It may be all you need. Do you understand? It may be all you need. And then the books, you can put my books. They'll just be gravy. Everything will be gravy. Find that reconnection with your creator, that state of mind that he wants you to have. He gave it to you when you were a little child, when you came out of the box, so to speak. You know, that's an expression. You know, you know what I mean. When you came out of when you came into the world, when you came into the world, that's what he gave you, his gift. Now find it and use it and become a Susan B. Anthony or a Stephen Jobs or maybe a Paul, a Ruth, a Mary, your children need to see that in you. They need to see you stronger than the world, not overcome by the world. They need to see you stand for true values, not the false values of the world. They need to see that.